Oh my goodness, we're really looking forward to this show. So what's the magic word? The magic word is Moana Loa Gardens Foundation. We talk about that today with uh, Pauline Worsham. She's what, the executive manager? Managing, managing director. director. <laughs> okay, and Charlie Cook, one of the directors, and he is a um, secretary treasurer of Moana Loa Gardens Correct. Foundation. Okay. Very important. So uh, Pauline, tell me what it is and what it does. Well, Moana Loa Gardens Foundation was founded 49 years ago in 1970, actually by two beneficiaries of the estate of Samuel Mills Damon. And they were two sisters, um, Frances Patches Damon Holt and her sister uh, Harriet Haku Damon Baldwin. And they founded Moana Loa Gardens Foundation to fight the, H, uh, fight the H3 from going through Kamala oh, Nui Valley. Oh, sure. The H3 dispute right. back when. Right. Uh, Boyce Brown, remember that name? Yes. No, he I don't. represented the people who wanted to oppose it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so because it was a privately owned valley by the family and closed to the public for over 100 years, they wanted to protect and preserve the valley. It had cultural artifacts in there and history that goes back to the ancient uh, Hawaiian chiefs, and they felt it was their responsibility to make sure that it remained intact. So that's basically how Moana Loa Gardens Foundation was founded. But then after the controversy ended, over H3. over H3 ended, they realized that it was important to educate the community and about stewardship and about protecting and preserving these natural resources that we have that are fragile and need to be taken care of. So then we transitioned into an educational organization and we were actually the pioneers of environmental education. We were the ones who developed the first environmental education program in Hawaii called uh, the OHIA Project Curriculum which was funded through a grant from the MacArthur Foundation and we partnered. Very prestigious. Right and we partnered with Bishop Museum to develop this K-12 through curriculum. So for over 20 years we um, taught the curriculum in public schools um, in Hawaii and on Molokai. And um, it became the forerunner of many of the environmental programs, culture-based programs that you see today. So, um, yeah, you told me that uh, you, you are involved in this 24 by 7. How do you spend your time, Pauline? Well, um, other than working out, I spend my time. <laughs> have to do that. <laughs> I, I spend my time working on projects at Wanalo Gardens Foundation. It really is a labor of love, and um, you know we believe very strongly that what we do is important for the community, the entire community. Well, Charlie does too. Charlie, why are you involved? Why am I involved? Well, I was asked about thirty years ago to join the board. Uh, I guess because our family is come from the missionary stock that arrived here You're in the eight, Cook family. Eight, 1837, yes. The Cooks, the Rices, the Wilcox, and the Lymans all came, and it took 116 days from the East Coast and down around <laughs> South uh, America. Those were the good old in, days. <laughs> you know, yeah. So we, uh, the family has always been interested in it, and they, the Cooks were brought here basically to help uh, start the educational programs for the Ali'i. And after the Royal School was built and joined, they started the Punahou School to uh, help not only the Ali'i, but the missionary children. And then when that was finished and going well, they worked with Bernice Pawahi Bishop to start Kamehameha Schools. So they were involved very heavily in that area. And you're continuing the family tradition then, eh? Trying to. I'm yeah. trying to. I, I'm, I'm sorry, my brother's no longer with us. He passed away in 2015. And he was very strong. He, he was the leader of the uh, branch of the Nature Conservancy here in Hawaii for uh, several years. Then Calvin Takeda took his place. And uh, then Suzanne Case was there until she moved over to DLNR. Yeah. But uh, we're a small organization. We're well organized because of Pauline. And we have a, a board that is very interested in what we're doing. And we are now considered uh, a Hawaiian board because a number of the people are part Hawaiian descent. Malika Jamile, the president, Pauline, and several uh, people from Kamehameha. Uh, one of them is also uh, an OHA board director. Uh -huh. 
So it gives us a little more oomph in the community. Yeah. And we see somewhere between 12 and 14,000 people a year for the two-day event. It's the biggest event that the Alani Palace has oh, ever yeah. had. Oh, yeah, let's talk about this event. This is very important. The event that Charlie is talking about is your major annual event, right? Right. Yes, it is. Tell us, tell us about it, Pauline. Well, it's called the Prince Lot Hula Festival, and it started in 1978. And um, it was organized to really um, unify the community after the controversy over H3, and also to continue the legacy of hula enchanting in Kamananui or Moanalua Valley. You were early in the Renaissance, I would say, huh? Yes, yes, exactly. And today, it's now the largest non-competitive hula festival in the state, we believe, in the entire world. But um, it's become a two-day festival, and we have over 20 halal participating. We have cultural practitioners, demonstrators. They demonstrate poi pounding, uh, feather lay making. You say demonstrators, um, you mean they demonstrate the culture, but they don't demonstrate political right. issues. Yeah, their culture. Yeah, their <laughs> art form. All culture. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> and this is in front of the, all the dancing and uh, the uh, exhibition and demonstrations are right in front of Iolani Palace, yeah? Yes, everything right. takes place on the grounds of Iolani Palace. And uh, there's a connection with Prince Lot there, too, because the grounds of Iolani Palace were really first occupied by the Kamehamehas. Kamehameha III, when he moved the capital to Honolulu, bought the largest and most um, uh, opulent house that he could find in Honolulu, and actually it belonged to um, his sister, I believe, um, Kamamalu, um, Princess Kamamalu, but it became the um, first uh, building that and that's across the way, the Kamamalu building, huh? Well, no, it's not across. Uh, the Kamamalu building was built by the state and named after her, but it actually was erected on the grounds of Ilani Palace. Oh, it preceded Ilani Palace. Right, Ilani it preceded Palace. that. Yeah. And so um, Kamehameha III, Fourth, and Fifth, who was Prince Lot, all resided in that house prior to uh, Kalakaua tearing it down and building what is now Iolani Palace. Mm. Charlie, you want to talk about the way that worked? Uh, Prince Lot, what was his full name again? Lot Kapuaiva. Well, Lot Kapuaiva? Yeah. And, and he, was the, he was the first he, elected monarch? No, no, no. no he, he was the last. He was the, the last, last of the non-elected monarch. Yeah. Yeah, right. Last of the Kamehamehas. Last of the Kamehamehas. And that was in the 1850s or so? He died in 1862 or 1863, I so believe. So they're a little later than that. And followed by uh, uh, Luna Lilo? Liho Liho, I'm sorry? No, Luna Lilo. Lu Luna Lilo. Right. Who only lasted uh, maybe a year or more, mm -hmm. um, you know, in office, and then he died. He was elected. Right. Uh, and then after him, David Kalakawa was elected, yeah. Yeah. Did I get that right? Yes, I did. I think you do have it right. right. I, I, get that yeah. right. I believe so. Okay. And there's always been, as I said, uh, it's the always a mind blower to realize that the monarchy uh, in Hawaii, two dynasties, the first Kamehameha and the second one um, Kalakaua. Right. But in the second one, they were elected. A monarchy that a king that's elected. This is really remarkable worldwide. Well, that came from the influence of some of the missionaries that were here. Maybe your family. Uh, I would think that my family was more on the educational side. And, you know, we left emphasis on Kauai, Oahu, Molokai, uh, Maui, and the Big Island, the Lyman House in Hilo. Is one, oh, sure. Is one. Yeah. So they were not that political. Some of the other missionary families became very, very political. And Why am I thinking of Curtis? 1893, when they... Uh, Liliuokalani was overthrown. That was a, a sticker for everybody. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was a bad time. But some of the history goes back that they thought uh, the British were going to try and take over Hawaii, and that's why the American businessmen kind of moved in on it. And all this is interwoven, right? Isn't it? It's interwoven certainly into those two dynasties, and Iolani Palace is interwoven into the history of Hula. Uh, it's interwoven into, um, you know, the foundation you guys are involved with. Right. The people who uh, were around Moanalo Gardens, the Damon family and other families, they're part of this whole 19th century history. So uh, we got some great um, materials I want to show. 
before okay. we go any further, Pauline. Okay. Um, so we have some slides. Let's identify them, and you can tell us what they are and how they got created. Okay, this is our um, logo art for and poster for this year's Prince Laud Hula Festival. Each year we come up with a different theme, and this year's theme is Imua Inapoki'i. And uh, what it means is move forward, or O oh youth, or actually the festival um, tries to perpetuate uh, our hula traditions through the newer dancers, the haumana that come up through the halau. So what we're, you know, um, um, perpetuating here is the continuation of the legacy of the hula through our young, through our youth. And um, the art was done by um, a Native Hawaiian artist called Shannon Weaver. She has been doing our art for at least seven or eight years now. And each year she comes up with a beautiful uh, design that we then translate into our posters, um, our T-shirts, our Here's your book advertising. On the, on the festival from last year, right? One of right. Uh, found no, Prince Lot Hula Festival, right? From last year, you can see it's the same art. Right, it's really beautiful. Right, yeah. yeah this is last year's um, art, and it shows, of course, the hula dancers in front of Ilani Palace, and it was again done by Shannon Weaver. And uh, this year, she used the image of, of the Coronation Pavilion. And these are um, a photo recap of last year's Prince Lot Hula Festival with the art, as you can see, um, the festival, the um, little um, bug there on the right-hand side is really the award that we received from the Hawaii Lodging and Tourism Association and AIO Media in 2018 for being the best tourism event for heritage and culture. I so, own media? Mm -hmm. that, that's Dwayne Carissa. Yeah. Right, right. Wonderful. Great that you're involved with him. Yes. Yeah, he's one of our supporters. Oh, good. <clears throat> so, um, you know, I mean, the whole thing seems to be um, a, a re um, an expression of the Renaissance. You guys started maybe earlier than the Renaissance that I observed, right? In the 70s, that is something, because it didn't take full hold until what, the 90s or even the 2000s with the music and the hula. And now it's in full tilt boogie, so to speak. It's really moving along. Are you Native Hawaiian? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yes, I mean, I you, am. you've observed this uh, through your time with the foundation. And Charlie, I'm sure you've observed it. You're, you're way back, Kama Aina, but you know, what's happening now is more groundswell, more grassroots right, right. Uh, with the Hawaiian people who are. Um, you know, uh, who didn't have the benefit of missionary blood yet. Well, you notice that the, a lot of the private and public schools are now offering the Hawaiian language, and then we have the emerging schools throughout the island. And they've had football teams that play each other that speak only Hawaiian. And I think it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing that's going on. And I hope before I pass away that I will see more of it. Uh, I know that Molokai is very interested in it. We had a teacher that lived on Molokai, and uh, we have a gentleman on our board that comes from the lineage of Moanalua, Rania Kao, and he's the that keeper. That means the Damon family. Yeah. No, it's, it means the original inhabitants of Moanalua oh, Valley. Of, of he's the, a uh, lineal uh, descendant. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. that's really going back. And yeah. uh, mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. is the keeper of all the Evie bones. Because there are a lot of burial sites on in the gardens and in the mountains there, and he knows where everyone is. It's, he, yeah. I've talked to him and I've gone with him on, on a couple of occasions. He can point out everything in those valleys. Yeah, it's just have amazing. To keep those uh, memories, that history alive. So let's take a short break, you guys. When we come back, I, I want to talk more about what you're teaching, what you're trying to perpetuate, how successful you are, and what you see in the future for the foundation. Okay, we'll be right back. Aloha and welcome to At the Crossroads. I'm your host, Keisha King. I'm live at five every Wednesday where we have entertaining and educational conversations that are real and relevant, both here in Hawaii and across the globe. I'll see you at the crossroads. Aloha. <laughs> 
Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. on the board came from the well that was restful wasn't it you know talking about old times <laughs> oh, okay pauline um we didn't finish the slides let's finish the slides okay because I, I really love the work i love the art and it's um, it's more than just good art it's, it's art with heart you know what i mean exactly and it's native hawaiian style um it, it's lovable art okay let's see what you got okay let's take a look um this is our opening ceremony it's the royal order of kamehameha and uh, Prince Lot, that his, that's his portrait there. He actually founded the Royal Order of Kamehameha after his grandfather, Kamehameha I. So we make sure that the Royal Order always participates in a major way in the Prince Lot Hula Festival. So they are the ones presenting the Ho'okupu, or the tribute to Prince Lot, there at the palace before we start the program. And this is a sample of the different halal. We have major halal, the premier halal from all over the state participating in the festival. Um, and they perform both awana, which is contemporary hula, and kahiko, um, which is ancient. And so you will see them performing those different art forms um, there in those slides. And um, they are excellent. All the the dancers that um, participate in the festival, I think since we've moved to Ilani Palace, they um, have upped their game. I think the presence there in such a um, revered place has made them more um, focused on doing the best that they can do. So really it's elevated the excellence of performance. Mm -hmm. Well, all of Hula, we have more slides. We oh, have yes. more Look slides. At this one. These are some of our demonstrators. There's a little kinky um, girl um, learning how to make lei from the Nawahine o Kamehameha, which is the um, uh, women's group um, offshoot of the Royal Order of Kamehameha. And then more kahiko dancing down below. And th this is typical of the kinds of attendance or crowds that we get at the Prince Lahula oh, Festival. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of people, as Charlie said, maybe 12 through 14,000 over the uh, two day period. Um, so that gives you an idea of how well attended and uh, interested people are. They come um, from all over the world, actually. We have people call us and email us ahead of time asking, when the festival is, they'll come from Germany and Belgium. Uh, of course, we have a big contingent from Japan. So um, it's really an international audience that you'll see and a lot of local people as well. And a lot of work for you. Yes, but a labor of love. I got it. And <laughs> with a great team, seven. with <laughs> a great team. And then we have an example of more demonstrators uh, that was in the prior slide. On this slide, um, we have beautiful hula, um, and we have some of our, our food vendors. The shave ice vendor, of course, is always very popular, um, and they keep busy all day long. And um, it's part of the festivity. What makes the festival so special is sampling our local fare as well. Very special, yeah. Keep going. What do you okay, got? next. And of course, this is our, um, our um, thank you, our mahalo to all of the people who make the festival possible, our major sponsors, which is Hawaii Tourism Authority, the National Endowment for the Arts, State Foundation on Culture and the Arts, Office of Hawaiian Affairs, and uh, businesses like Douglas Emmett and Matson Navigation and Hawaiian Airlines, Royal Hawaiian Center, um, Midweek and um, the Honolulu Star Advertiser, um, our in-kind sponsors, of course, Iolani Palace, 
and um, the Hawaii Visitors and Convention Bureau, Oahu Visitors Bureau, and Olelo, who helped to um, film and broadcast mm. the uh, festival. Mm. I want to come, too. I want to come with a camera. I hope you'll let right. me oh, yes. film this. You're very welcome. What day in July? It's Saturday and Sunday, July 20th and 21st. Mm -hmm. On Saturday, we start at 9 a.m. and we end at 4 p.m. And on Sunday, we start at 9 a.m. and end at 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. Charlie, are you going to be there? Are you going to be uh, dancing? Uh, we, what, what, is, what is your halal? I'm afraid I don't dance. I'm too bloody old. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm there, and I usually sit in the booth with Kimo Kahuano, who does all our announcing, and keep him laughing. And He's very good. Very good. He's excellent. And uh, we watch the program, and we try to keep it on time, and we've been very successful in that. Uh, we allot so much time for each halal to dance. Very important program. Oh, yeah. yeah. It has to be, you know, marshaled right through. Yeah. Otherwise, we'd run over time. And that doesn't work too well when that happens. So we've been very happy with, with it. And Pauline has been the key. Uh, she's on our roller skates the whole time. So. <laughs> of course. One would expect no less. Yeah. yeah. So it, put this in the landscape for me. <clears throat> we have... Uh, you know, a lot of people are still very disturbed over the overthrow. It's, it's deep into, uh, in, into Hawaii's history and culture, even now. Uh, the, the, the Renaissance, the reemergence of, uh, of dance and, and the Hawaiian language and music, um, in the last, in my time anyway, the last, what, 20, 30 years, has been notable, remarkable, and still going on. You guys are part of that. Mm -hmm. um, you, know, I, you know, I mean, uh, there are others, of course, Mary Monarch, but... You have a special place in that landscape. And then, and then we have, you know, we have uh, the whole sovereignty issue where people argue about things. And I just want to know where the, this foundation, Marlowe Gardens Foundation, fits in, in the Hawaiian community and the future of the Hawaiian community going forward in the state, in art, in culture, uh, and as a community. Want to go first? Sure. Um... Well, Moanalo Gardens Foundation, actually, we're all about celebration. You know, celebrating our culture, um, being positive about um, what we have today and looking back in, at the past and learning from the past and perpetuating the hula traditions that were um, first um, found in Moanalua Valley. So, you know, we... We try to stay apolitical and neutral, um, but we are about celebrating. We are about um, uh, educating our keiki um, and making sure that they understand um, how important it is, their culture, how important it is to continue and perpetuate yeah. their culture. But hula is more than dance. Yes. Hula has moral principles. Hula represents uh, those special Hawaiian principles. Uh, that we carry forward that are so embedded in our state and so revered and nurtured uh, by so many people in our state and so important to the future of our state. Um, can you talk about that, Charlie? Well, as we know, uh, like the Mary Monarch, we have two types. The Awana is one. Oops, I'm... Oh, Kahiko. Kahiko, excuse me. I <laughs> lost it there for a second. And... Uh, the majority of the people that come understand the difference between the two, and there's a lot of the tourists that come and enjoy it too. And I've been fortunate enough to talk to a lot of these people that are uh, visitors, and they're just overwhelmed by it. They said they, and this is free. Mm -hmm. They don't have to point out the big bucks like they do in Waikiki. Consequently, they love it, and they want to know more about it, and they ask if they can film. And, we have a policy of no photographing uh, because they're the professionals that are doing it there. But you can't monitor that 100%. Right. So if well, you bring a camera, I'll guarantee that you won't be thrown <laughs> out on the King Street. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> One last thing I want to ask you is that, you know, do you have advice for the, the Hawaiian community, the Native Hawaiian community, right here, 2019? What is your advice to them? My advice? Your advice. Is to keep doing what they're doing. But to stop the arguments and fighting, you know, uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there, and uh, the media seems to like to play that up. 
So those people in the community that are educated, born descent, I feel should be more active as possible in there because we have the Mount Care problems, Haleakala problems, and I've visually seen that uh, on the Big Island. I went up uh, to see Mount Care with one of my daughters and they had all the big pohakos, the big rocks in the road, and so we just drove by. I didn't want to get into a confrontation. What's your advice to me? I'm a Haole. I, I have no claim to this culture, but I, I certainly appreciate well, I'm it. I'm Haole too. But the okay, roots well, are very, what's your very advice deep. to me from where you are as a, a board member of the Mauna Loa Gardens Foundation? That's a tough one, Jay. That's a tough one. <laughs> what my advice is? Keep doing what you're doing. You look at you're, you're giving us this opportunity to, to uh, broadcast more information out to the community. Anytime, Charlie. And, and that that uh, that's very important to us because we need all the help we are. We are a small organization. Uh, we are financially in good shape. Uh, well, if I wanted to make a contribution to the foundation, where would I go? What would I do? Check your check. Get your checkbook out. <laughs> right, Moana Loa Gardens Foundation, yeah. and you have my card and Pauline's card. There's an address there. Mail it to us, and you or, will eventually get a thank you letter. Yeah. Or you can go directly to our website, www.moanaluagardensfoundation.org slash donate, and you can donate online. Oh, and that's great. We would that's be great. grateful for any and all of donations. Course. It, would be well, it would be worthy. Uh, last question to you, Pauline. What's the future of the foundation? You've put a, many years into it. Uh, what's, the, what's the plan going forward for succession, uh, renewal, uh, expansion, continuation? What's the plan? The plan is to keep on going. <laughs> um, but right now we're working on a succession plan. You know, we brought the organization through some difficult times. And as Charlie said, you know, we're a stable organization now, but we would like to see it grow. We would like to bring aboard people who have the same vision, who want to move it forward, because there is a limited amount of time that we have that um, we want to make sure that when we leave, um, that it's in good hands. And so we see a bright future for Juan Lua Gardens Foundation. The Prince La Hula Festival is well established here. Um, it's become a signature event for the community. As I said, the largest non-competitive hula festival in the entire state. And our education program is so important. And so we need to uh, make sure that these programs continue into the future. Mm -hmm. And we're making those plans right now mm -hmm. to put in place not only the infrastructure, but the people to make it happen. Holy well, Worsham, Charlie Cook, Milo Gardens Foundation, I love you both. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha. Mahalo nui. Mahalo. Yeah.